All right there, everyone. The new YouGov poll has shocked the British political establishment by showing that the brand new Brexit party, not even a week old, is now polling as the number one most popular party in Britain. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. But first, a warm welcome to all of our first time viewers. I post two videos a day analyzing current events and some really awesome conservative trends. So if you would, please smack that bell and subscribe button. It'd be an absolute privilege to have you as a regular part of our online community. All right, so the latest YouGov poll that was released just the other day shows that the Brexit party, the brand new week old party launched by Nigel Farage, not even a week old, April 12th, the Brexit party is now polling at an astonishing 27% of the vote ahead of the European parliamentary elections. On May the 26th, Labour comes in at second at 22%, and the Conservatives are polling at an abysmal 15%. They actually dropped a point from the previous poll. That previous poll showed Labour in first place with 24%, so they'd also dropped two. The Conservatives were polling at 16%, and then Brexit was just behind them at third at 15%. Interestingly, when you combine the support of Brexit and UKIP in that past uh, poll, the pro-leave forces are together polling at around 30%. This is without them basically doing much up to this point, at least with the Brexit party. It was just as a default base of support by virtue of their announcement as a formal party. So that's pretty amazing in and of itself. Now, what appears to be happening is that a significant support for UKIP is defecting over to the Brexit party. I think UKIP was polling at around 14% earlier in the week, but they've now dropped down to 6%. So with Brexit party polling at 27%, obviously a lot of Brits are defecting, as well as from the Conservative Party and indeed also from Labour. Remember, 60% of Labour voters voted leave. 70% of Conservatives voted leave. 60% of labor. But as many pundits and commentators have noted, leaders in both parties has simply failed to deliver. There is a really good article on National Review on this, the author of which pointed out that failure after failure, broken promise after broken promise, created an entirely self-inflicted crisis of trust upon both the Tories and labor. And the gulf between members of parliament and the ordinary voters of the British electorate seems to just be widening every single day. And the main beneficiary of this frustration is clearly the new Brexit party. It's gone from 15% support with its initial announced launch, then to 22% a couple of days later, and now they are they have hit 27% support. It's anyone's guess how far they're going to go here. Now, I know... I know a lot of you don't like Nigel Farage. You see him as a traitor and a milquetoast nationalist populist. I get it. And I, too, have been disappointed with Farage's exiting from UKIP. I've been disappointed with his take on Tommy Robinson alike. No question. But this channel is about trends. We're looking at how current events exemplify wider conservative trends. Trends that are wider than Farage or UKIP or the Brexit party or Britain itself. And so I think it's imperative that we understand what's going on here from a big picture perspective, because it really does seem to be very, very significant here. Here's what I think Farage is trying to do in all this, okay? You have to remember that many nationalist populist parties in Europe have had to go through a process that actually Marine Le Pen of France's national rally, she called it de-diabolization, okay? How's that for a million dollar word? De-diabolization. It's also known as de-demonization. Take your pick, okay? What de-diabolization or de-demonization involve is basically an intentional normalization process taken by nationalist populist parties in Europe that seek to bring the party out of the polit political periphery, the political fringe, as it were, and into the mainstream. Matteo Salvini's Italian League did this. Remember five years ago, the Italian League was still a secessionist party, right? It supported separating northern Italy, which is rather conservative, from southern Italy, which uh, trends liberal, okay? Uh, they were the Lega Nord, the Northern League. Uh, they even ran on that name for the last elections back in March of last year. Now they are the Italian League, and they're all about uniting the entire nation under a nationalist, populist, and traditionalist vision. That's called de-diabolization. It involves an intentional normalization of the party 
so that voters who are discouraged with the centrist parties, either the center right or center left, they now can defect and move over to this new party. But in order to do that, it requires that the that the party appear mainstream. And Farage is clearly concerned that UKIP was failing in that area. Now, we could agree or disagree on that, but it does appear that his instincts were right on this, at least when it comes to the perceptions of the British public. So that's the first thing to recognize in terms of the larger picture of what's going on here. The major trend that appears to be manifesting itself, secondly, is, um, and we'll be talking about this this evening, is a process known as de-alignment. Okay, so we have de-diabolization and we have de-alignment going on here right, with these polls. De-alignment involves the breakdown of the bonds that used to exist between traditional political parties and their constituents. And this breakdown in the bonds that voters have had with their traditional parties is now making it easier for political challengers to rise up and take the nation, indeed the continent, with the uh, parliamentary elections, in a new direction. So Brit, get this, it, in Britain, in the 1960s, around 50% of the British population felt strongly aligned to one of the traditional parties, Tories or Labour. In 2015, that's dropped to 10%, about 13%. Party loyalty has dropped from 50% to 13% in just a few decades. And when you look at the Brexit issue, Support, support for Brexit just cuts across traditional party lines, and it's created an extraordinarily difficult situation for both parties. Since the majority of the voters in both parties voted to leave, while the MPs themselves mostly want to stay, since, of course, they profit off their relationship with Brussels. Remember, over 2 million Brits voted for Brexit who did not vote in the last national election. For them, there just was no choice representing their concerns. So clearly the opportunity is there for new parties to sweep in and offer voters a new direction. And that's precisely what Farage's Brexit party is doing and doing very, very well indeed. So as we're just a few weeks away from the European Parliament elections, it does appear that a surge of British populism is ready to revolt. They're ready to revolt against the two established parties that have so disappointed in their bumbling of Brexit. And they're ready to storm Brussels with but one message. Leave means leave. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out some of our merchandise in the link below. We have some awesome God Emperor Trump mugs, t-shirts you're going to love. We have some apparel celebrating all things nationalist, populist, traditionalist. And please click on either our Patreon, subscribe, start PayPal links below, become a supporter of this channel, and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of awesome conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.